Welcome to the Outside the Business Boxes podcast, where we're talking about how to ignite your business today for the future using systems for everything you do in your business to make your life, your employees' lives, and your customers' lives easier for you to ultimately enjoy your business and, of course, make more money. I'm your host, Chad Murray. Thank you for listening to Outside the Business Box podcast. Like I said in the intro, this is Chad Murray. I will be your guide into oh, your business and your future if you choose to uh, listen to my podcast. So thank you for coming uh, today. So part four of building a business. So probably been done a little bit earlier, but let's talk about the back end. The back end, CRM systems, scripts, product sales, working on relationship with vendors, QuickBooks. That's all in this episode today, guys. So what there are things that make these things successful and there are things that don't. Most people in starting a business, even when they get are muffling up through the million dollar ranks and sometimes even up to $20 million, believe it or not, they don't properly use the back end right which is why I have a job so well in coaching because I have done it correctly and why I don't need so many SOPs and why I have this because I know how to use a CRM system to its full potential. Okay, so let's talk about it. CRM systems. I use QuickBooks. There's Service service Titan out there. There's there's a, a house called Pro. There's RazorSync. There's smart service. There's all these. What sets one apart than all the others? None of them. They all are great and they all suck. Why? Probably because, and not probably, they all suck because you're not using it right. Now, what everybody loves about service Titan so much is it has so much and it's so great. Well, a lot of that stuff could be used so much better if you even used it correctly. So. Let's talk about it. All right. So obviously, when you have the that, you have your scheduling and your estimate, scheduling, and then your estimates, and then your invoicing. You, you got to have pictures. You got to have notes. You have job costing. Uh, you, you, you know, you have all this before and after pictures. I said just pictures, but before and after. So it really becomes a management system. So... Let's talk about it. How do you set yourself up to have a management system that is going to help your employees? So even if you're a one-man gang out there, you're a chuck in the truck, and you're going to be building your business, if you set up your CRM right and you train number one, your your first person, call center and or guy out in the field, how to use the CRM, CRM system correctly, you will have such a more fluent system. So let me tell you how. So first of all, you go outside of the scripting and you go and you build a script for how you answer the phones and try to do a very conversational. I use Stonely, used to use Zingtree. There's a lot of them. Do not use a piece of paper. I will tell you the best thing you ever do is go in there and spend a week every night building out, maybe even two weeks, building out a script. So we have not had to do this yet, but I plan on in the future also building out scripts in Stonely for us or actually a new system coming out that uh, that I am investing in uh, that uh, is called Service Galaxy. We will, it's going to be a competitor CRM system, but your scripting will be in there. But the scripting will be for everybody, not just the call center. It'll be for training. It'll be for how to talk to the customer, for item, for everything else. So that I'm building that out as of we speak, and hopefully it'll be out um, by the end or beginning of next year. But if since you don't have that right now, you must script out the people in the call center exactly how you want them to say it. What's important here is this isn't just a system of what they tell the customer. Now you're building a company culture with language. So you start adding trucks, you start adding salesmen, you start adding people <clears throat> to do the jobs. And what happens as you don't have any scripts? The customer says, the call center told me this. And you're sitting there going, they wouldn't say that, but you have no proof. 
you have no idea what they would say because it's the Wild West because all you gave them was a binder and they're just supposed to read the binder and go off of that. And then what happens next thing you know, even when they have scripting, you got to be on them to make sure that they're reading it. And now so nobody really knows what everybody's saying. So if you have it as a literal program like on Stonely and you're listening to them once a week, a couple calls, you'll know. Listen to three calls. If they're not on that script, you you don't have to listen to everyone else. You go to the call center person. You say, hey, get back on the script. I need you to say it like this. Exactly like I said. I made it to you like this. I know it's easy to memorize, but you're not saying it like I said it. Please get back on that. Now everybody in the field knows exactly what you're saying. So when the call, so when the customer says to the sales guy, well, the call center told me this. Well, what happens is, is they call 10 other places. They book with you, and they remember what all the other 10 people said, but not exactly what you said, your girl said, or guy said. So they can confidently look in their face on the scripting and go, that's not what we say. And if you work at Master Services, we can actually pull it up and show the customer if they ever want to say, well, you said this about an inspection. No, no, I didn't. Not only do we have the call re recorded and we can pull it and listen, but I can also show you the script. It's on our website. Okay, so so that's how you, you script that out and make that easy for anybody. You can literally train a call center person two, three days, if not one day. If they, if they already know your CRM, CRM system, like they already had another job, and they know how to put appointments in, all you got to do is show them Stonely once it's built out, and they are off to the races. They know exactly what they're saying once you've built it all the way out, all the way through every question you can think anyone answers on the phone. And boom, you got it all scripted. So, okay. So now you get, so you do this, you do all the routing, you do all the scheduling. So now the guy goes out there and writes up an estimate. So what do you do with this, with, with the items that they're doing? So if you do it to where an item is completely alone and they have to think of every item, well, there's an easier way. You got to build bundles. Now bundles do not mean, bundles do not mean that you're, you're giving discounts. If I'm selling a stove, or uh, I use a stove, sorry, people, I'm in the chimney industry. So if I'm selling a wood stove, then I'm going to put every part on that wood stove for a certain price for uh, a 30-foot run on the pipe. Okay, I'm going to put it all on there. For my sales guy, has a one-click thing, has a wood stove on it. Take all my appliances I put on there, and all I can do is edit the description change the quantity and the, and change the price correctly, and boom, that's done. Waterproofing bundles for us. So all the chimney saver stuff plus the chimney cap is on one line item for me. How big the chimney is and how tall it is. They pick out how big and tall it is. It has the cap already in there for me in that size. Uh, Two-story, 14-square-foot uh, chimney is, it has all of them, all of them on there. So, yeah, one click. Now, we all usually have quite a more stuff that we add to it, but instead of going to click five items on that one thing, it's all on there in one deal. So they don't have to remember what they did or didn't forget, and it all goes on there. And if you do that with all your common sales, then you got it. Now, here comes the oddball. You must have a miscellaneous labor and a miscellaneous part that's blank. So that if there's anything that someone can't find or forgets as they're out in the field, you teach them to put in our miscellaneous and labor, and you can change it later to what it is if they couldn't find it. And that, or if there's something goof, goofy, labor miscellaneous is awesome. They can just write it up however they want to do, put the description very detailed, tell them to do that, put a price on it, and boom, you got it. I mean, our guys do that all the time, you know. And generally, it is for some of that some of that goofy stuff, you know. But we don't have an item for some some goofy, and so they they go they go do it. They make it up and go. And then if that becomes something that's not so goofy, well, then we'll make it an item, and we'll bundle it up with whatever. And so, I mean, that's how you make a system of how to sell. And then, what's so great about it? You can put cheat codes on there and different things, part numbers and blah, blah, blah. So then the call center knows what to order. 
So in my business, I will tell you, the call center does all the ordering. Not the sales guy. Not the guys doing the job. Not the management. Why would I not have the call center doing it? If the call center is just there to make appointments, you're wasting, that's not enough. They can order the parts. If every item has all the parts on there in the quantity, why can't they do that? And then they have their own system of either a, a spreadsheet or whatever, how they ordered it, whatever you want to do, or if you can put it on your CRM, if it has that, whatever. My current one does not kick serve, but we do is it in the notes. When a job's a job is approved, we have we have so as you build your business, I'll say this. We we branched out two years ago into separating the call center into line one people and then job job people, scheduling jobs people. Now, if the line one people are busy, are in are on the phone, then everyone else goes to line two, ring two. I see line. Ring one. We have ring one girls. Then everybody answers them. Everybody competes to answer ring two. If you're on a job, you 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 go to ring three. So if, let's say it's we're in our buying season, busy November day, and our three girls that are lying ring one, on uh, ring one are 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 busy. They can see in our our phone system that they're busy. The other people that are on ring two or on or ring three. They go to answer the phone. Really efficient system. We don't we don't have very many people on hold, but that does happen. And then when that when they're done, then they make the appointment. They go back to scheduling their job, or if they're ring one, they just wait for the next ring. And so, as you see, you're building a you're building a complete system here, and it all starts to go together if you do it correctly in the beginning. And so. So we've talked about scripting, we've talked about estimating, we've talked about how to schedule jobs and how to order everything. So it's that simple. Now, your CRM, all of them take pictures now. And I know if you're in the inspection industry, your report's going to have all the before pictures. If you're not in the inspection industry, you go do an estimate, all your before pictures, existing pictures of the job as you estimate it should go on the job on the estimate. And then when you sell it, all the after pictures go on there. Here's the key, guys. Someone has to look at those pictures every day. Management's duty is to look at the pictures and the jobs every single day from yesterday. If you don't do it, chaos occurs. Most of you are in chaos because you don't, literally don't know what the hell your people are doing on the daily with their jobs. Then you complain about, well, I don't know how to train them. What do you mean I don't know how to train them? All you do is train them, and train them long enough to where they can go out on their own, and then you just start looking at their jobs. Now you, you talk about them every day with them, or what they did wrong, or what they have to go back and do, and they help out, and they have content for meetings. See, as we're, as we're building a management system here? All this stuff starts cogging as you start rolling a business. So when you're smaller, let's say you only have two or three trucks right now. How hard is it to go look at their seven to 10 jobs that estimates they did yesterday? It literally takes you less, literally one minute to look at a job and you know something's wrong. So what do you do then? Most of these jobs have what they call reminders or they have some, or you schedule another job. They have something that you can schedule off the appointment that you're in. So if I'm in Mrs. Baker's appointment and I see that the guy screwed something up, or they need to go back and do something. The job's done, let's say. Or maybe it's in the middle of the job. I'm looking at all the after pictures today. Maybe we're in the middle of a job. Well, I noticed that this was wrong, or I need something done, or or you need to go pick up something. In our system, we it's called a reminder. So we schedule a reminder to that crew or who's relevant to it, and they get they get scheduled to do it in the morning before a.m. or before 8 a.m. before they leave. And then you have to make sure as management that everyone is looking at the reminders to make sure whatever happened that you looked at yesterday is done. If it's something big, even after hours, the night before, you call you call that technician up and talk to them, but you still put the reminder on because what what, what they do with the reminders is they click they've done it. Now we know they did it. And there should be an image to prove it. If you run your business operationalized 
with images, you'll, you will be so much smoother if you look at them every day and you demand the before and after pictures, the after pictures for sure. You'll catch so much. It's gold in training, pure gold. I mean, I'm not a big binder guy. I don't like binders. I do everything in my CRM system or I, or I get an app for it. And so, I mean, we're only down to three or four apps now. I mean, Connect Team took a lot of it. But operational-wise, we, all we have is Stonely, QuickBooks, which isn't really even anything uh, to the guys out in the field. So Stonely, QuickBooks, uh, and KickServe, uh, and Connect Team. That's all I got. That's what's running my whole company. Now, we do have Google Drive. We do have Monday.com. That's upper-level management stuff. When it comes to the operations of the normal people, not normal. They're all normal, or maybe they're not. <laughs> uh, but uh, the uh, uh, the daily operations, that's how you run it. And so right now, as I do this podcast, I stopped going to my level 10 meetings, except for the first 10 minutes, which ended up being 23 minutes today I was on there. But I go to a management meeting every Monday. Uh, as I re record this one, it's 2.15. And at 1.30 every Monday for an hour and a half, my management team gets together and discusses this week. Rocks. Uh, and to do's and where they're going and what they're doing for the next week before the next meeting to see what we're going to accomplish. I stop going to the full time. I just show up for the first 10 minutes and I talk about whatever I want to talk about. And then they continue on with the meeting and I see the notes in monday.com. And so, but yeah, so that is, you, you have to use these systems correctly. And so bundling, or at minimum, if you're going to bundle, realize the bundle does not mean a discount. A bundle just means it goes together. That's all it means. If you happen to be in a system that takes pictures and images of that thing as part of your, your CRM, well, then I would suggest, well, like maybe putting a note on what else goes on there. But I would, I would if you can do more than one picture, uh, that would be good. Or you just have to take a picture of the overall thing if it has five different parts to it. Now, obviously, you're going to bundle stuff that pretty much can be in one, one image. And so it may be 10 different parts in that image, but it is what it is. And so um, but that's going to make it really easy to write up. And then easy to order, easy to work. Everybody's got it. They can see what it is. I mean, my guys can show up and go, they got a waterproofing bundle. They know they got to get a cap. They got to make sure they have enough waterproofing. You gotta make sure they have enough uh, uh, flash seal and uh, crown coat, and uh, make sure they have enough mortar to do the mortar crown, crown wash. We don't do mortar crowns here. Uh, we do crown washes in Texas, Oklahoma. So anyway, okay. So with that said, you have this little system starting here that you're starting to use your system correctly. I'd go back and re-listen to this again exactly how I did it if you have to. But there's another part at this point that I want to talk about, and that's QuickBooks. I think I talked about it a little bit before, but let's talk about QuickBooks. It took me 24 years to get my QuickBooks right. It's a very goofy scenario. I've hired bookkeepers. I've got a bookkeeper on staff that doesn't really know his books until he got schooled a little bit more on, on QuickBooks and got right. Once he got right, he's good and stays on top of it. But my books were wrong for 24 years. It was always funny when I went to go get a loan, how a banker or a loan officer can look at my books and they knew immediately within a minute they were wrong. That always pissed me off. It was like, how the fuck do you know my shit's wrong? And then they all of a sudden go wizardy on me on what they know about your stuff. And I was always lost. It was like fart in the wind. Like, what the hell? You just say I'm, it's gone out of my brain. I didn't understand what you're saying. Well, we finally got it down where we got someone came in there last year, fixed the books. We've kept them up ever since, done it right. And we also hired an external bookkeeper to do it as well with David, my CFO. So now it's all right. Do I think when you're building a business, you should get that up front? Yes. Is it as important as you might think? No, because you can always get your books done at the end of the year by somebody. They can maybe pay a little bit more. To do it, it, it's up to you. I've done it both ways. Um, 
they never got my books right. I went 24 years with them wrong. And so it is what it is. But I will tell you, it is nice to know that eventually and finally, my books are dead right on balls accurate. And it's cool to be able to see the reports that you can pull out of there to see some of these numbers. <clears throat> so <clears throat> is it super important in the beginning? Not super important. Is it something you need to eventually do and do it correctly? Yes. I don't suggest waiting 24 years like I did. The one thing you got to double check when you have someone doing your books, let's say three months, go apply for a loan or ask a banker, go to your banker and have him, look, a loan officer, and have him look at your books real quick. You don't have to pay someone to do it, do it. That It is canny how they can just tell you literally literally in one minute if they're right or wrong they know how to match stuff up from one report to the other and if they don't match your books are wrong it's crazy and so i suggest you do that and so now i know so how i knew mine were right when we went to buy this new house our property uh that we were moving to last week and this week and even next week we had a five hour five acre property masters is moving to when we sent our books did our paperwork to get the loan. I got a call from the loan officer to ask me a few questions. And I said, do our books look great? He goes, Hey, your books look great. I'm like, ah, all right. First loan officer that ever told me that. <laughs> and so it was, it was good. So they all matched up. All the reports were copacetic. So that was exactly what we like to see and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so there you go. So the next thing I really want to talk about at the beginning of a business, you know, part four, is the vendor relationships. What is a vendor relationship? I'll tell you a story. So I had a vendor uh, once. I'll, re I'll re remain nameless in Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, a certain distributor and manufacturer of gas logs. Do your own math on that. That I was installing for them and then selling their product. So I had three guys working for me and we were doing our own business and installing their stuff. The nice gig. Long story short is the guys they got caught. Someone in their in their uh, business got caught stealing, so they made a yellow line in the warehouse. Do not nobody if you don't work there can cross this yellow line. Long story short is I got pulled in past the yellow line by one of their employees, and as I as we were coming back from what he wanted to show me, um, we stopped. I don't know, ten feet, twenty feet short of the yellow line. And one of the owner's sons, who was a big bear, uh, uh, he ended up grabbing me and pushing me towards the yellow line, like pick me up like stuff. I mean, back then, I wasn't as heavy as I am now. As a matter of fact, I wasn't heavy at all. I was like 180 pounds and working out all the time. And uh, this guy picked me. This guy was like six foot four. And he worked out. And he picked me up. And I was like, I, you know, when you're limp and you're just talking to somebody, you don't see Someone come up behind you and pick you up. You don't know what the hell's going on, especially in a in a, in a uh, um, business atmosphere. And I didn't feel like my life was threatened by any means. But all of a sudden, you know, I also got jerked. When I got jerked and thrown, I knew something was up. And then I bowed up and we got into it, not into a fight fight, but into like, what the F is going on here? And and he said, I told you, you know, about not to cross this yellow line. And of course, his employees like, I brought him over here. And I looked at him and he just like pointed at me. And I said, guess what? I'm calling all my three guys back. This is back in Nextel days. I Nextel all three of my guys, bring your shit back. And so we brought all our stuff back. I emptied my truck on the dock right there. And I left to never see them again. Went and had lunch uh, or late breakfast with my guys. And we discussed what we were going to do from there. And so that vendor burned that bridge deservedly. So for them, so I had to find another another company. So I went and found another distributor locally, uh, which I have used for years, and we still use them. And I uh, became very friendly with them and literally went to lunch with the guy running the place often. Uh, I went in there and talked to him at least once a month, if not every two months, and, uh, and built a relationship. So let me tell you why that matters. So... I've had two times in my business, once when I filed bankruptcy after I almost died uh, from the, the appendix, and then another time when we were having our lawsuit, when I felt like the world was coming down on us, 
uh, I needed some help vendor wise, you know, and I walked in there and both times walked in, talked to the, the gentleman that ran the place, told him what's going on. He says, no problem. Don't worry about your building. When I filed bankruptcy. I didn't actually put them on the bankruptcy. I paid their bill off. Even though I wasn't supposed to. That's you know, it's 20 years ago now. Well, 18 years ago. So anyway, um, yeah, that was the relationship that I had built with them that I went in there and said, listen, I can't pay right now. I got other stuff going on. Is it okay? Or I'll, I'll, I'll just, you know, whatever. Can I just, uh, uh, any understand? I just had a nice talk with them. And it's cool. So and as, as you still go through your, your stuff and all this, is you also, you also start, using these vendors like they're gonna you know i had i had a call last night from a vendor on sunday i had a call yesterday afternoon from a vendor asking me for an early buy on a sunday and i'm like yeah and i don't want I, you know i have special terms i might have early buy i'd like to do blah 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 we talked about it we worked it out and and it's a great note i have to call my i meant to discuss it in my meeting today and i forgot i'll have to mention it to my guys that I can do an early buy on a bunch of chimney products. And I don't have to deal with having to order it all the time. So anyway, so yes, that is part of what you should do is start building these relationships because they matter. Whenever you need something, it, you know, I have probably 20 people that are vendors or in the industry or somewhere that I now, even back then, I probably still had a good long list people I can call and ask for a favor and get it done no matter what when liners in the chimney business were real hard to get last spring or last fall in the buying season I was able to get them I was able to call for a couple of my clients to get them and help them out and so I was able to actually help a couple of clients get wood stoves that were not going to come unless I made the phone call because of my relationship with some people uh, because my clients didn't have that relationship with the same vendor that they've had for years and I barely had but I had a good relationship with them. So that's, that makes a difference. So if you start off knowing the people and everything else, I mean, this is where not so much the Christmas card matters, but the gift. I like to send a gift to my vendors at times and, and do that and, and buy them pizza. Like I haven't done it, actually, because I've been out of the business now a little long. I haven't done it in a while. I need to do it again. I used to have yeah, pizza once a year, I'd buy pizza for my vendors. And I would I'd tell them, hey, next Friday, I'm I'm sending over how many people are going to be there for lunch. I'm sending over pizza and, and sodas uh, and some breadsticks. And I would buy them there. And so it's a very good practice to have. People remember you. The warehouse will remember you. I mean, it makes a difference. And uh, And when you start doing those kind of things, it's really funny how the favors, you can ask a favor and they feel like they owe you, even though all they did is spend 50 bucks on Domino's, <laughs> you know, and so, or maybe a hundred, who cares? They remember that. I, I, I did donuts too every once in a while. I would shift it. So I, I probably, I'd probably do donuts uh, uh, once a year and I do the pizza thing uh, generally once or twice a year. So that's, that's kind of how I used to roll back when I managed the company. Uh, and I need to get back to that. I'm glad I remembered that. Uh, but I still have a bunch of favorites. So anyway, so the back end, we're back to the back end, even though that one, that's your relationship isn't really the back end, but it kind of is when you need to order stuff. So set up your CRM to be an asset on your systems on how to communicate, on how to order, on how to quickly do an estimate, how to quickly see everything from a high level right at one appointment. I can, I don't work at my appointment. I can now go into Kickstarter right now on a job today and I can look at what the report of what it was like the day we estimated it. And I can look at if the job is done, let's just say last Friday, I can look at it today and see exactly what was done and the quality of it from all the after pictures. And believe me, my guys are, are slated to have an after picture on every item, every item part as well. So if there's a bundle and there's five things, they have to have those five pictures for the after thing. Or they'll go back and do it. They'll have to go back reset up and go back up there and take the pictures. And if you don't think we do it, this is where accountability matters. We do it. Pictures were the hardest thing I ever had to do until it came to the scaffolding and harness and stuff. But by golly, if you look at my kick serve, you're going to see 
we get tons of pitcher per job. And it matters because we see everything. So pitchers are a thousand million, million words you can get out of, is it done right or wrong? So guys, systems and how you use them matters. Use them correctly. Make sure that you're making it easy for everybody, the call center with their scripts, the, the way that they estimate. Make sure that the after pitches are done. Have a good relationship with your vendor. Um, and everything will work out uh, as you're starting to build the business, as you're building these little systems. So, guys, for that. So, if, if you need a little help with that, you know, here comes the end of the podcast. Uh, you know, give me a call. Give me a little note. Messenger on Messenger on Facebook. Um, you can find me, Chad Murray, if you haven't already befriended me. Friend me on there and message me. And if you're willing to do a... Uh, uh, you know, chat about your business, you know, let's talk about it. You know, I can, I can coach you and uh, help you get through this and help build your business. So with that guys, that's my time. We'll see you next week for building a business. Part four is done. We'll see you on part five.